um, and, and I hope that they can maybe trigger something in you. I hope that maybe they can add some value to the quality of your life so that you can become a higher, fuller expression of who you're capable of becoming. Okay, so the first thing that I've been really thinking about this week, and, and it's something that has been a really a recurring theme in my life, is I've been thinking about this concept of that we have to challenge our reality. So the reason I've been thinking about this is because I'm sure most of you are aware there's a new Matrix movie that came out. And I've been talking to everybody about the Matrix movie and I've been asking people, why do you think that so many people love the Matrix movie? Why do you think that the Matrix was so revolutionary for so many people? And I think in part, based on the feedback that I'm getting from a lot of people and the reflection that I've been uh, going through myself, I think the reason why The Matrix is such an impressionable movie and was an impressionable movie for many people is because The Matrix made a lot of people challenge their reality. The Matrix was a metaphor for a lot of people, was the father figure, was the Mr. Miyagi to the Karate Kid of for a lot of people because I think a lot of people have not lived in a world and ha do not have people around them who challenge what they believe who challenge what they believe to be the truth. I tell people all the time that the reason why I wrote my first book on conditioning is because I recognize that until you realize that you're conditioned, you can't possibly think about even ever reaching your potential. Like, How can you reach your potential if you think that your potential is, let's say, a 5 out of 10? When you, If you think that your potential is a 5 and the ceiling for you is a 5, but actually your potential is a 10... If you have been conditioned to believe that your potential is a 5, you will never go for a 10, even if you're capable of doing it. And I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday in my workplace, and we were talking about the fact that how many people are raised... We were actually talking about private schools. And we were saying, look, if you go to a private school... Well, actually, what he was explaining to me is his cousins went to private schools, and he was talking to his cousins, and he was saying, Cass... The difference in their thinking, the difference in their uh, kind of uh, uh, reflecting and their ideologies and their approach to life is very, very, very different to his because he went to conventional state school. And I was saying to him, why do you think that is? And he said, well, when you go to, obviously, I, I, he was explaining what he thought. And he was like, Cass, if you go to a private school, obviously, you get certain tutors, you get uh, people all these resources available to you. You get to meet people from all walks of life. And one of the things that I added to him, which I think is really important, is I was explaining to him about the fact that the original reason why, one of the original reasons, let me rephrase that, one of the original reasons why people went to university is because university challenged what you believe to be the truth. Okay? When, like, I, I, when, when I first started off studying successful people, I was shocked when I studied people who made it to like uh, uh, MIT, Harvard, uh, who made it to Oxford. Um, and these individuals, I'd study them and I'm listening to them talking about how they got there and what the experience was. And the amount of people who said that they, they were in top sets, they were doing amazing before they went to Harvard or MIT. And the moment they got there, they became a bit depressed. Because the moment they got there, they realized, damn, I thought that I was doing well. I thought that I was clever. I thought that I had to figure it out. But now I'm in this room. I'm in this community at this university with a lot of people who believe things absolutely with conviction down to the point where they're willing to prepare to fight me and to protest. And those opinions directly oppose my own. And the issue that you then have is, well, you either ex open your heart out and say, okay, why are these people at the same university as me who all seem clever? Why are they saying these absolutely crazy things? Why are these intelligent people saying these absolutely mad statements and saying things that are completely are opposite to what I believe to be the truth? And this is where I guess the separation for a lot of people happens because I remember I was reading a book um, by a woman called Dr. Carol Drake. Dr. Carol Drake talks about this concept of a fixed mindset and a growth mindset. 
So she believes that a fixed mindset is somebody who believes this is the way that I am, this is the way that I was born, I'm a product of my genes, I'm a product of um, my parents, and that is all my life is. So if I was born poor, I'll always be poor. If I was born with dyslexic, I'm always going to be at a disadvantage. And she said the opposite to that are people who have a growth mindset. People who have a growth mindset accept that there are certain characteristics and traits and genes that a person inherits. But they say, irrelevant of that, we can still grow as people. We can get better. We can improve, right? And the, the difference in these two approaches and these two philosophies and mindsets is that one mindset stops you from growing. One of them stops you from developing. One of them stops you from taking things to the next level, to reaching your highest capacity of what it means to be you, right? And the other one encourages you to pursue your capacity, to push right to the edges of your capacity, to see what you can do. And here's what I'm trying to say to you. There's a lot of you who are going to be listening to me. It may not be you, it may be your best friend, but there's a lot of people who are going to be listening to me and they've never challenged what they're capable of. They've never actually tried to go 100% into their capacity to see whether they can reach greatness. To see, like, a lot of, like, let me give you a challenge or something to try. Try for the next 30 days to be the absolute best human being that you can possibly be. Work as hard as you can possibly work. I'm talking about if you have the choice between giving 100% or giving 30 and no one's there, give 100% even nobody is watching you and watch what happens to the quality of your life. And I say this because a lot of people have never actually tried this. I say this to you. If you've never actually gone to the gym and worked out for a long sustained period of time, meaning six or seven months, try it. See what happens when you actually work out regularly and, and, and eat healthily and uh, 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 feed your mind with positive energy and positive people. Try that for eight months and see what happens to the quality of your life. That's what I talk about really pushing to the edges of your of your reach to the edges of your uh, potential or the edges of your of your greatness a lot of us haven't ever reached that a lot of us haven't ever stretched to that but I, as i say in part because many of us have never actually challenged our reality many of us are living in this matrix we're living in this zone we're living in this bubble where we don't even realize that there is uh things outside of what we believe to be the truth that there are uh, there is greatness that there is abundance that there is joy right I remember I was listening to a lady a few weeks ago and she said something to the effect of don't allow your experiences to cloud your uh, potential for the future. Meaning she was essentially saying because she was talking to women who had gone through uh, men who had dumped them or men who had gone through relationships where the women had cheated or betrayed him. And she was saying, look, you need to be careful that if you've had two or three different people betray you or cheat on you or lie to you or, 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 or abuse you, that you don't allow that to cloud the fact that that is a very small minority of people, right? And, and in fact, actually, one of the things that I say to people, and I'm going off topic slightly here, but stay with me, one of the things that I say to people is you have to do the maths, meaning there's a lot of people who take extreme cases, who take extreme examples, and they use the extreme examples and the extreme cases as an excuse to either not try or as an excuse to continue going down a certain route. So what I mean by this is, for example, a lot of people will say, well, Kasim, a lot of people can't be millionaires, okay? You need to be uh, born in a certain household and your parents need to be a certain whatever to be a millionaire, which is not actually true. Obviously, in order to become a millionaire, it obviously you would be a, a, an anomaly because the majority of people are not millionaires. But what you can do is you can leverage yourself and, you, and, and it, well, number one, you have to accept that it's even possible that you can become a millionaire, which we know that it is because we've seen loads of people start off with nothing and become millionaires. After you fought that battle, you then have to realize, ah, okay, I could actually do this. I could be somebody. It's one thing to think that somebody else can become a millionaire. It's a very different thing to think that you could actually do it. And when you start looking at it and you start actually pushing and you start examining, oh man, 
I, am I, I could actually do this. I could actually achieve this. It changes your entire viewpoint. It changes the paradigm in which you live your life. And so I guess one of the first things that I want to ask you to think about, and excuse me for a second, one of the first things that I would ask you to think about and you want to question yourself on is, have you been pushing yourself? Have you really been challenging what you believe to be the truth for you? What even is your potential? Do you even know? Who told you what your potential is? Because here's what the conversation that we had earlier on with yesterday with my friend. <clears throat> if you've grown up in a household where look, people have told you that you're not enough, you never amount to anything, you'll never do anything, things are impossible, etc. You won't ever think that it's actually possible. In fact, you will think that it's your normal. Um, the, 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 the formula that I say to people for what is normal is, what the formula for what is normal is what is familiar. Whatever is familiar is what is normal. Meaning, if you saw your parents as you were growing up, you saw your dad punch your mum when you were growing up, that becomes familiar. Guess what happens to a lot of men when they later on go and get married themselves? Whenever they're unhappy or they're angry, guess what they do? They punch their wife. And you say, well, how can somebody do that even though they know it's bad? Why? Because it was familiar. It feels like home. It's normal for them. And so my question to you is, what the hell is normal to you? Let me finish this off by saying this. So basically, in my first book, I give this story about these two fish. Let me tell it to you. So basically, there are these two fish, young fish, they're swimming along. There's an older fish swimming in the opposite direction to them. As they get closer to the older fish, the older fish says to the young fish, Good morning, boys. How is, the, how is the water this morning? The young fish look at the older fish and they're a bit confused, thinking, what a weirdo. How is the water? Whatever. So they carry on swimming. He then carries on swimming in the opposite direction, whistling on, having a good time. A little while down the road, one of the fish, I know you're thinking fish don't talk, Hassan, but in this story they do. A little while down the road, one of the fish says to the one of the fish, she's the other fish, a bit like puzzled and worried and thinking deeply. So he says to him, "What's wrong with you? What what's up, mate?" And the other fish says, "Nothing, nothing. It's, a, it's nothing." He says, "I know there's something wrong with you. So what's your issue? What, what what are you thinking about? What's worrying you?" And he says to his friend, "What the hell is water?" And the reason why I gave that story, and in fact, it's the first story that I give in that book, is that. Uh, if you've been born in water your entire life, how would you ever know that you're in water? The only way that you'd ever know that you're in water is if somebody came along and said to you, you're in water. And here's where it gets even more interesting. For the majority of us, if somebody comes along and tells us we're in water, do you know what we're going to? Denial. Denial, denial, denial. We'll say, well, there's no such thing as water. You're trying to attack me. How do you think... Here's where the difference happens in people's lives. There are some people who say there's no such thing as water, you're weird. But then some people say, hmm, why would somebody ask me what is water? Number one, what even is water? This is where now you get clever and you start looking at questions like, hold on a minute. Everyone around me seems to be unhappy. Why? I'm doing the same things as they're doing and they're all unhappy. Does this mean I'm going to become like them? Hold on a minute. Everyone around me seems to be angry. Everyone around me seems to be successful, and I'm unsuccessful. Why am I unsuccessful and they're successful? What is it that they're doing that I'm not doing, right? This is now where you get into self-reflection, you get into uh, introspection. And what I'm trying to say to you is, a lot of us, and it's really the point of what I've been thinking about a lot this week, a lot of us have never stopped to actually look around. Have you ever driven and you've driven somewhere and you've not actually realized how you've got to where you've driven and you were on the motorway and you left the exit, but you don't ever remember leaving the exit? And you get there and you're like, God, I, I could have died. Like, I don't even remember how I got here. And so I guess as you're listening to me today, one of the questions that I would ask you is, how did you get here? Where even are you? Where is here in your life? Are you happy? Define what happy is. What the hell does it even mean to be happy? Are you successful? Well, let's define. What even is success? 
Who, who said what success is? And even more, are other people influencing your definition of success without you even realizing it? You know, there's just, let me finish off with this story. I know I said I was going to finish off with a fish story, but let me finish off this, with this story. I remember I once heard this story with Jim Rohn, and he said, he was giving this uh, example to a bunch of school kids, and